Hey guys, this is Roland from the forums, and uh, I'm here to fill in for Madmol with uh, Q&A Volume 13. Madmol's been really busy trying to get Alpha 16 ready for all of us, and so he said that I could go ahead and answer the rest of these questions here that we have on Q, and uh, hopefully get everybody up to speed with what's been going on. Um, I went ahead and and uh, thought that uh, it might be fun for me to answer these questions while you watch me play through uh, the first day and a half of uh, some random gen Alpha 16. Uh, so you can kind of get a, a view of uh, what the first day and a half might be like once you get your hands on it and uh, hopefully you enjoy that. I skipped the, uh, the initial quest. I, I didn't think you'd want to watch me chopping trees and bashing boulders, but uh, uh, We'll go ahead and start with the Q and A, uh, and and go from there. So, first question is from Ajbas, and he asks, "Have zip lines been any further developed past the initial preview we saw on one of the early A16 videos, and is this still considered to be implemented for the A16 build?" Well, I can tell you that I haven't seen any further development on them. Um, as much as it pains me to say, it's looking more and more like they might slip to um, Alpha 17 or, or maybe uh, you know a, a later um, you know 16.2 or 16.3 um, you know it's just they they've kind of zeroed in on their top priority features that they want to get in for Alpha 16 um, and the rest of it is just kinda gonna make it if it can and get pushed back if it can't so um, you know, I, I still have some hope in my heart that uh, they'll find a little bit of time and zip lines will make it in. And, you know, they've surprised me before where it just seems like it's just about time for things to all be put to experimental. And, and like a day or two before that, something gets put in and, and uh, they make it work and, and they stay on schedule. So, you know, anything's possible, but it is looking like it's... Uh, it's going to get uh, pushed down the list on the priorities there. Um, Undead Wolf asks, would it be possible to have doors that can be level with surrounding walls and also be painted? Basically a secret passage door and you get to paint it the same as surrounding blocks to hide it anywhere. Well that sounds like an awesome idea. I can tell you that um, for the first iteration of the painting tool and the painting feature that that's probably not going to happen. Uh, right now you can paint blocks and entities like doors and the mini bike, um, we can't paint those yet, but anything's possible in the future. You know, Madmole mentioned that um, internally they have a feature now where they can tint things like the cars and, and uh, you know, who knows, maybe they'll be able to integrate that in with the painting tool and, and give us the ability to to uh, paint mini bikes and doors and, and, and entities that move and things so you know we'll see for the future uh, Maharan says will the number difficulty of sleepers in a POI be affected by game settings for instance if we choose to have fewer or more zombies in the world by changing the enemy spawning game setting Will that alter the number of sleepers in each POI as well? Um, you know, I'm not sure on that. I'll have to uh, check on that, and we can let you, and I'll let you know. Um, maybe I can, uh, you know, test that out a little bit. Try two different worlds with uh, um, spawning set to the max and spawning set to the minimum, and uh, and go into a couple houses and see if that affects the uh, the sleepers. But uh, as far as I know, the main thing that's going to affect sleepers is your game stage. And, uh, and that's pretty much what's going to affect all spawning and, and the difficulty of the spawning and what you're going to get in the game as we go forward is, is you know, the, the game's going to dynamically alter according to how well or how poorly you're doing. And uh, so, uh, but I'll test that out and, and let you know um, in the developer diary what I found out about that. Uh, Zombie Horde asks, is it possible to add a hinge between blocks so we could design our own doors, 
bridges, traps, etc., however large or small we want them. In a related note, what about pulleys, pistons, and gears? So, <coughs> I can tell you that um, I, I don't see anything like that coming in Alpha 16 but possibly down the line. You know, obviously that's a great idea and I know that the developers are very interested in, you know, mechanisms and uh, using the electricity to, um, you know, create machines and things that uh, that you can use. And, and I know that, that being able to do things like uh, pistons to push and pull blocks and, and, uh, and do things kind of like how Minecraft has done in the past and, and then, you know, adding hinges um, onto blocks and things that you know that sounds like a great idea um, and uh, you know I'll make sure Madmole hears about that and and, I, and if it's part of their plan to to kind of go into that direction once they have the basics of electricity established uh, I'm sure we'll see that so cool idea uh, Horst asks, could item combining at the workbench get the ability to combine clothes of the same type, even if they are of a different color, possibly with the outcome of a default color like white or black? I would guess in an apocalypse, you would be more interested in functionality than color of your clothes. Well, Horst, I asked Gaz about this very thing, and, uh, you know, he said to me that it would involve uh, a need for coding, which... Um, what that translates to is probably not for Alpha 16, you know, maybe in the future. Um, you know, he did say that right now it is possible with clothes that are exactly the same color because they have the same item number. Um, but for clothes that are uh, the same type but different color, uh, unfortunately that can't be done right now and they would have to actually code that in and uh, and that would add you know time onto their schedule of trying to get alpha 16 out so you know maybe in the future uh, that will be something we could see uh, slash poke asks any chance for radio station walkman you can find with cassette tapes to go with for some music to liven up the apocalypse when playing solo or with friends just would help liven it up a bit well, I agree, and you know, I think uh, that's something that I've heard Madmole mention before that that he would like to see at some point. Um, it's not going to be an Alpha 16, I can tell you that, uh, but you know, maybe as a, kind of a wish list um, for the developers, um, possibly after the game goes gold and and they add, you know, DLCs and things to it. Um, but uh, I I definitely remember hearing. Uh, in a previous video or, or you know Madmole mentioning that he likes that he, he is a big fan of uh, Fallout 4 and I, I know you can do that sort of thing with Fallout 4 so seems pretty likely sometime in the future Shine Blossom asks in regards to painting would you consider a texture so that it looks like you spray painted a cross or a circle on the wall or doors to mark something as looted or dangerous or something in let's say two colors green and orange that might or might not glow in the dark um, I can tell you that there's a target that I've seen as one of the uh, textures that would serve pretty well for, you know, painting on the side of a house to show that you've uh, already looted that. Um, as far as other things like, you know, um, some, maybe a word that says contagion or the, the symbol for biohazard or something, you know, those types of things would be cool. and. And, you know, even if I haven't seen those at, in the moment, I can tell you that, um, you know, there's lots of space still for textures in the future. And I have seen, you know, multiple um, versions of things like shingles and different wood textures and different brick textures. So, you know, it seems like, you know, they're kind of getting the, the basics in place for this first rollout of the painting tool. And I'm sure they're going to fill in and add additional textures and things as they hear our feedback and, and, and see what we would like and as they get in and play themselves and you know all it's going to take is one time for uh, Mad Mole on one of his playthroughs to wish that he had um, a texture to spray on a on the side of a house that uh, that had a biohazard signal or s symbol or something and then you know he's going to put it in there so um, they're definitely um, 
going to be looking to fill in more gaps in whatever textures they have and, and adding more varieties so that people have lots of choices. Um, Harlebell asks, with the possibility of taming wolves or bears possibly in the future, I was wondering if it might be possible to tame and capture zombies. Maybe have them muzzled and on a chain. My clone, twin sis, and I managed to take all limbs off a crawler. For a brief time we had a pet and we named him and later buried him. Ah, uh, um, I watched the video and uh, was very impressed with Fluffy Cuddlekins. And uh, I can tell you that that's not going to happen in A16. Um, but who knows, you know, in the future, this game has always kind of been um, stated to be a cross between, you know, Minecraft and The Walking Dead. And, and uh, I think having a kind of a Michonne moment with a, a pet walker or something might be pretty cool. But... Um, you know, we'll kind of see. I think their their first priority, as far as pets go, are, are to get the wolves done, and then uh, they'll go from there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Wolf asks, "What's the status on the Dead is Dead mode and main menu revamp, and is it still scheduled for A16?" I haven't heard anything about this since the first announcement of A16. Well. Um, there hasn't been too much shown um, or that I've seen in the notes or anything. You know, something like that, though, I don't think is too difficult. Um, that's something that they could probably uh, do last minute if there's time or maybe sneak it in to 16.1 or 16.2. Um, you know, all the coding and everything is in there um, for um, um, old... Actually, you didn't ask about the reversing with the uh, zombies run during the day, but walk at night. I guess that's what I was thinking of. As far as dead is dead mode, that might take a little bit more. You know, we'll see. Again, it's just they 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 pick their their priorities, and uh, and those rose to the top of the list, and those are the things that they are dead set on getting done, um, and get a16 out to us in a timely fashion. Um, and some of these other things, they may make it in, and they might slip to, to, to Alpha 17. Uh, from Munda Cheese asks, will we be able to hook up doors, openings, closings to the electrical system? I'd like to be able to drive over a pressure plate to open the drawbridge door, etc. It would be even more awesome if they could be programmed to automatically close after a delay timer. Uh, so I've seen pressure plates. Um, and I know that those pressure plates are designed to create an action. As far as opening and closing doors, I'm not sure. Um, but I am absolutely positive that that's something that, uh, that they're going to want to do. And if, it's doesn't, if, it, if something like that doesn't quite make it into this first iteration of um, electronics, um, I know that it will be in the next... Um, that you know they they want um, to be able to allow us to have some automation and and uh, some programmed um, you know things. They, I know there's not a delay timer yet, um, but I I know that uh, uh, things like that are, are what they would like to see. So uh, Alpha 16, possibly. I don't know. I haven't seen it. So. Uh, you know, maybe we can answer that in the dev diary, um, you know, once I find out. Um, as far as, you know, doors opening, closing from a pressure plate. Um, you know, I, I know they're putting other triggers in to cause, um, you know, electrical systems to turn on or turn off besides a pressure plate. Um, so, you know, it seems to me that um, a door opening and closing would be something that they're probably... Um, keen on, on getting going as one of the first types of things besides the traps, you know, um, to be able to turn on from a, from a pressure plate. Um, Gloomy MP asks, would it be possible to make spider zombies walk upside down on the ceilings? We have crawlers. We are used to worrying at eye height and below. Give us a new scare to deal with. And has Sleeper 
maybe they could start out in the corner of a room up by the ceiling. I think that pretty much is universally thought as um, an absolutely fantastic uh, idea and something pretty much everybody wants to see. Um, you know, I don't know if it's going to make it into A16 or not, um, but, uh, but definitely um, I know that, that they want sleepers to be the, the freakiest, uh, scariest, um, most worrisome part of scavenging and, and, and going and exploring a POI. And it seems to me that uh, once the game stage is high enough and you have crawlers, uh, or spiders, I mean, um, that are going to be some of these uh, sleepers, uh, you know, to, to stick them up in a corner of the room or, or um, you know, something like that to, to really freak us out. But, you know, we'll have to see. I, I don't know if, there, if something like that's going to be in the first uh, iteration simply because I haven't played a game long enough to get to a point where the sleepers are anything more than just the basic zombies as you can see here on day you know one here um, the sleepers are all pretty basic zombies and they're not too difficult to, to overcome uh, but uh, should be exciting once uh, things progress a little bit further uh, let's see Ozzy's Fang asks, will we be able to use the paint tool on mini bike frames or maybe even the whole bike? Kind of talked about that. Not for this first uh, uh, go with Alpha 16. Possibly later. You know, we'll see. Yo Joe Schmo asks, with the upcoming ability to save blueprints, uh, will there be any possibility of going back to old save games from previous alphas and saving our previous builds to bring them into our current world, or will the feature only be comparable going forward? I realize that the feature is probably not going to make Alpha 16, but the reason I ask is that usually I don't keep my save games from old alphas, but need to know if I should this time to preserve my awesome A15 base for future build. So, um, the deal is that um, there are so many blocks that have been changed for Alpha 16, removed, and um, IDs reassigned to different things that, uh, you know, you could bring a, um, a base that you've built in a previous Alpha forward, but you're gonna, there's going to be a lot of um, work on your part to change those blocks over. And I know that there's some people in the um, forums that like to create conversion tables to help the community to be able to make those changes. And, you know, we'll see if that happens. It's going to be a big job going to Alpha 16 because of all the changes with the painting system and, and how they've changed all the POIs and gotten rid of so many of the, uh, of the old blocks. So, you know, I, I would say it's, it's possible to bring your old base forward, but you're going to have a lot of personal work on your end converting all those blocks to, uh, you know, new blocks. And, and there may not be even any um, conversions for some of them, and you'll just have, you'll have holes that you'll have to plug and that sort of thing. So <coughs> should be interesting to see what happens. Um, Sitting Duck asks, Hi, Big Double M, or in this case, uh, big single R. I was wondering if it's possible for a quest event to spawn a creature. For example, could a hunting quest cause animals you need to hunt to be spawned? Because while talking with friends, we thought it'd be awesome to find tracks, get a hunting quest, no XP, just nice meat, and then go for the animal. But we wondered if a quest could spawn something. Um, uh, I would say that uh, that's probably something they are definitely planning for the future. You know, the quests that we have now are just placeholders. They're just the beginning. They're just basic. You know, you get a piece of paper, and that, that gives you a challenge. You know, they're more like even just challenges rather than actual quests. But, um, you know, that's quests and group quests and all sorts of different um, possibilities with quests and, and different, not just, you know, fetch this and fetch that, but... But, uh, you know, quests that could spawn possibly a group of survivors in a POI that are in trouble that you'd have to go and save them or 
quests that would spawn uh, bandits that have taken over a POI that you have to go and uh, and cleanse. You know, definitely these are these are the types of things that they want to do uh, moving forward. And uh, and he did list quests as one of the very top priorities um, coming up next. So I think uh, we'll see some exciting things on that down the road, uh, probably for Alpha 17, but. But we'll see. Uh, Zombie Lunch asks, I noticed in your last preview video that everything was really dark, and not just when you were inside the new bear and the fat lady, as well as some of the current zombies in Alpha 15. I think the spastic zombie, for example, are really black and basically just shadows from further away. I like seeing the details in the zombies, so I was wondering if you could brighten them up and perhaps increase the contrast on some of your entities. <coughs> so... Um, what I can tell you is that there's nobody um, who is more um, sensitive about the way the game looks and wanting to see details and wanting the lighting to be perfect than Mad Mole himself. I mean, probably um, most alphas uh, he's gone through and, and kind of tinkered with the lighting, trying to get it just so, and, and it's kind of gone back and forth. and. And he definitely uh, is someone that's he's he's not going to settle for you know half-assed lighting. He, he's going to want really good quality uh, details and and and, uh, and for the lighting to support that. So I don't think you need to worry. Um, I just don't think it's on their priority at the moment. I, I think they feel like the lighting right now is good to get us to beta, and then they'll just you know do all sorts of polishing with the lighting. And you know, with most other things like uh, sound and uh, um, I think you know, kind of things like that 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 don't seem like they're perfect, but they're good for getting us through this phase um, of development. Um, they're probably going to be pushed down to the bottom of the priority list, and and uh, they'll revisit it uh, once they've got all the rest of the major features that they want to get in done. So. Um, no, I, I would say um, you don't have to worry with with uh, with with Joel. Um, you know, kind of taking the lead on all the art and and lighting and things like that. Um, you know, it's going to be good um, for the final product. So he's not going to let it. Uh, he's not going to let it slide. Um, Exit asks the Steam Audio SDK was recently released and is supported by the Unity engine. After playing the demo, I thought it would be a perfect fit for sleepers and Seven Days to Die immersion in general. Have the pimps thought about adding this? Couldn't tell you, Exit. I don't know, but I'll uh, pass that along to them and and uh, and see. I'll, I'll probably wait to pass that along to them until after Alpha 16 ships because if I did it now, I can tell you they would not be very... Uh, patient in, in trying to figure it out. They, they have one thing on their mind right now, and that is getting Alpha 16 into our hands. So, But I will definitely uh, bring that up um, in the future. Uh, Dabinster. I know this is just the first iteration, but one thing I would like to see is sleepers being able to lunge at you or quickly attack your feet before getting up. If you walk right into them, is something like this already planned? <coughs> yes. Um, and they're working on that right now. I think for this for this first iteration, there's there have been a few times when, um, and I don't know if it was a glitch or what, but there were a couple times, um, not this time, but another time that I was playing when I walked up um, close to a sleeper, and, and I thought you know oh it'll slowly stand up, but it really quickly lunged at me and it and it really shocked me. So hopefully. You know that is what they plan, and and uh, there'll be some of these where they kind of slowly get up, and then others where they do a quick lunge and, and really shock and surprise you. So I think, uh, like I said before, they are going for maximum freaky atmosphere um, with these sleepers, and in in making um, explore exploration through these POIs uh, something really special. Uh, Snowdog1942 asks, thanks for the awesome game. Will we see wooden or steel bridges in random gen? Um, I don't think so for Alpha 16, um, but I 
remember um, Robert, aka Kenya Jew, saying in in his uh, Q and A that uh, bridges are things that he wants um, in the future. You know, he's really been focused on getting the sockets and and the roads themselves settled, as, along with you know the the upgrade to to uh, random gen itself. And uh, so you know, but I think bridges are on his radar. So sometime in the future. Longshot asks, fake distant forests make at least some random coloring to avoid having bald hills. Uh, th that's a big maybe. Uh, Mad Bull has mentioned it before. He, he has said that if they can, if there's uh, the ability to do so without causing, you know, performance issues, that they're going to do it. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe at least have some, like you said, some coloring or some sort of a texture that that uh, gives the appearance of foliage, you know, on the distant hills. Um, but they don't know yet. Right now, for Alpha 16, we're getting the, the distant POIs, and they really are awesome. Uh, Guppy Kerr asks, mocap session, what's up? Can bears stand on their hinds? Um, the mocap session was completed, and I believe that they've gotten the data, and I think that's why Mad Bull mentioned to me that uh, bandits are back at the top of their priority list, so going forward once they get Alpha 16 done. So I think, uh, I think we're going to see some exciting stuff, and, and uh, you know, you won't have to do your best with them anymore. You, you'll be able to to uh, see what uh, see what the developers can do with it. Um, bears standing on their hinds, I haven't seen it. So I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be uh, an animation that they're going to support. It would be pretty cool, though. Kaban asks, will finding schematics become more interesting? Currently, you can find most of the schematics books fairly fast. Can you make it so schematics are broken up a bit? For example, instead of one shotgun schematic, can it be four shotgun schematics, one for each part of the shotgun? Or can finding schematics involve another step? For example, instead of finding a schematic, you find a quest letter telling you where to go to find the schematic at a secret bunker, for example. <coughs> I'm going to go um, on record saying that probably yes to the quest letter or a quest that would lead you to schematics. Um, as I said, they're, they're wanting to um, enrich the whole quest part of the game um, as one of their next um, things that they're going to focus on. Uh, as far as creating multiple schematics for each part of the shotgun, I really doubt that they're going to do that. Um, but, you know, anything's possible. Uh, the Gronk asks, during one of the videos about distant POIs, you said that there were speed issues when trying to generate um, LOD meshes at runtime. Have you considered using octrees for this? I know you're not a programmer, so here's the shortest bit I could find that explains the concept in plain language. Gronk, I watched it, and I'm not a programmer, and uh, it was pretty cool. I liked the uh, giant um, little chick that uh, you know you get closer to and closer to and all the the empty boxes all the empty voxels you know you don't worry about and it. it's just the ones that uh, that uh, um, have something in them that that get rendered pretty cool idea um, you know I don't know you know once again um, this is something that I could probably um, bring up with Robert um, after Alpha 16 releases um, you know, bringing up, uh, hey, how about this type stuff, um, usually results in gruff answers, and um, we're just focused on Alpha 16 right now. So um, I've kind of learned that during this time, just like uh, all of y'all are um, antsy and kind of uh, cranky, and we're getting all these uh, hashtag gates coming up on the forums because we just want Alpha 16. Developers are kind of the same way. They just want to get it out. And uh, But I'll, I'll bring it up with them um, at a future time, or maybe, you know, you'll have a chance to ask him when he's on sometime. Um, but, 
looked pretty cool. I thought it was I thought it was a good idea. So, um, Katie Studios asks regarding sleeper zombies: Will there be dummy sleeper zombies coming in the future? Uh, basically, look like sleeper zombies, but just be lootable corpses would make exploring a dark building even more scary when you don't know if that corpse across the room is the rotting, festering undead, or just an unfortunate survivor who's bitten the dust. Um, <coughs> yeah, um, I've seen in the notes something along those lines. I'm not sure exactly how it works, um, but I bet Gaz could explain it better um, if uh, if he goes on and uh, to the dev diary sometime and and uh, talks about sleepers a little bit because I, I thought I saw his name attached to um, some note about um, sleepers that might be decoys or, or something like that so um, well, I guess we'll find out um, it could be that uh, that's one of those things that they don't want us to know fully <clears throat> you know kind of a spoiler so I'll just, again, just go back to what I said. They are very, very um, focused on making the whole sleeper experience um, freaky and scary and um, horrific. And, uh, you know, even I know everything that we've seen so far, they seem underwhelming. But I have to tell you that they are all the basic zombies. I mean, the Alpha 16 is not really ready for a long-term playthroughs yet and you know there's been times when I've I played through maybe three days and then have to start over again because a new build has come out and, it's, and you know it's kind of required a, a, a new start so you know being able to play for long enough to we get some of the tougher uh, zombies as sleepers is not something you know that we've been able to experience yet but something that hopefully we will and and, and like I said, at once they get the basics in and get us playing with it and get our feedback and, and can see it in action, they'll be able to tinker with it and, and make things that, uh, that will freak us out as we're uh, walking through these houses and, and opening containers and things. So I think it's going to be awesome. Dan L. asks, yes, I'm enjoying that cigar and drink. I think I gave you rep for uh, one of your little quips on that. I thought that was really funny. Uh, will all the existing POIs be getting new coats of paint with the paint tool or just the new ones? Um, I think it's pretty comprehensive, Dan. They've, they've gone through and just removed <coughs> a ton of blocks, which pretty much requires them to replace those with, um, you know, uh, metal uh, blocks and, and and uh, rock blocks and, and concrete blocks, you know, that they can then paint, and wood blocks that they can then paint, um, depending on on the, the POI. So um, it's it's pretty much uh, everything. Um, you know, if they didn't get to everything, everything in in this first pass, eventually they will. The, it's just uh, it's pretty awesome. And I'll, I will add um, something here that I discovered. Um, it, it appears that, at least the last time that I played, uh, the rule was that when a block loses half of its hit points, that's when the paint comes off. So if you want to discover what the underlying block is, uh, you've got to damage it halfway, and then the, the paint pops off. I don't know if that's final, but that's, uh, that's what it was the last time I tried it. Dicey asks, I get high lag spikes when I look at dust sandstorms. I imagine it isn't a problem for most people, but my question is simply this. Can we get a graphics option which enables us to turn off or preferably tone down the particle weather effects? Whatever you call them. This would further help people like myself with low-end machine cards who might also have this issue. Thanks. Um, I can tell you they're not going to put more options in until the game's further along. Um, you might be able to go in and uh, change some things in the in the XML settings, and there's some awesome folks over in the modding forum who are so helpful in in uh, helping people out. You know, you just go in and start a thread and ask, say, "Hey, I want to I want to disable dust and sandstorms, and uh, is that possible?" 
and you'll have step-by-steps on how you can do that in no time. So um, I, I think that's probably um, the best that you're going to get right now. Um, once we're out of alpha, then uh, Madmole has said that uh, you know as the game is ready to go gold, he is totally um, into having tons and tons and tons of options for performance reasons, but also for preferences and and allowing people to easily, you know, without having to go into the to the XMLs and um, to be able to to configure the game the way that, that they like. So, you know, something like that should be coming. Um, I did notice on your specs, 4 gigabytes of RAM. I hope that you are running the game in 32-bit mode, uh, Dicey, because uh, if you're not, um, you're probably not having the most stable experience. So that's my recommendation is uh, go into the launcher and switch to 32-bit mode if you haven't and give that a try. Uh, see if that helps with your with your uh, frames per second and your performance. Uh, Andy Red asks, after being a long-term admin, I have to ask, is there any talk to add more features for admins, such as right now, not even admins can place blocks within trader areas. So if a trader glitches, there's no way for us to respond them back. Also, we could really do with a way to respawn cars in bulk without having to manually place them back into the world one by one. That's some busy servers when it reaches 500 plus days. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, they... Uh, they do plan in the future to um, do all of that. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna revamp the land claim block. They're gonna look at PvP. They're gonna look at servers and server tools and uh, and give you know a lot more power to to server admins. Um, but unfortunately, I'm pretty sure that that's not gonna happen. Um, for this Alpha 16 rollout, so um, you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer. Sorry, Andy. Sid 1373 asks: In the new video, you mentioned you turned off the horde spawns and only had sleepers spawning to demonstrate them, and I was wondering if the options you could add that feature. And I'll just say the same thing I said before. Um, you know, well, first of all, um, you know, I can go in and check and see if. Um, the um, settings for um, numbers of of zombies affect sleepers, but as far as you know, separately turning off the the walking around zombies with the sleeper zombies, um, they're not going to have a setting like that in the options menu anytime soon. It's you know the the options menu will get filled out and and uh, created later. Kingslayer GM, Sup Mad Mole, uh, you mean Sup Roland, he showed us the basics of electricity and power, what are the plans for logic si signals, classic 5 volts, true or false signals to be used with logic gates and or not, buttons and sensors need those logic stuff, thanks bro, um, I'll tell you they're aware of that, I don't think those things are going to be in for this very first um, iteration of electricity but it, they definitely are aware of it and uh, they do want to create an awesome electricity system for, for the game. So um, I don't doubt that, that those things are on the horizon, but uh, most likely not Alpha 16. Uh, Sills, I want to ask about sound, which may have been talked about before. I can be in a building and a zombie could be outside or something and it will sound like it's right next to me. Also, if I make a sound like open a door in the house, the zombies can hear me as if I just shot a gun. So my question is, will sounds be reworked to accommodate range and structures? They will if you put a bug report in at the bug. I'm just kidding. Now I know exactly what you're talking about. And, you know, this is the same thing with the lighting issue. Um, you know, they're not, they, I'm sure that they know. Mad Mole has played. He's been in an apartment building, I'm sure, and heard zombies out on the street and it sounds like they're like right next to right next to you I, you know I think it's something that's pretty much known but like I said uh, optimizing these things and, and getting them to the best they can be will be something that they're gonna do at a future day just not right now right now they just got to get everything in and 
you know, you just have to live with that idea that you know that they're outside and maybe you get a little jump scare, you turn around and look really fast because you think one's behind you, but it's not. That's just kind of part of the experience right now until they um, are ready to fine tune, you know, things like lighting and sound and, uh, and get all those things done. I know that sound is also really important to Mad Mole. He's going to want it to be awesome, so he's not going to just uh, let it stay the way it is right now. They'll, they'll get to it. Roboman54. Farming gets tedious after a while with having to kill the action key to harvest. How about adding scythes for area harvesting and or grass clearing? Um, <coughs> that's a maybe. Maybe in the future. Um, they'll, uh, you know, I think he's talked about scythes. I, I know that they increased the speed of the hoe for, for taking out grass, but you know, that doesn't necessarily save your finger because you still have to press the action key just as many times. So, you know, I'll, I'll bring that up um, when it's safe to do so, and uh, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, Rizano question. In regards to vultures, will they be prevalent in the same places as hornets were, or will they be in deserts as well? Well, um, you know, that'll be interesting. Uh, I am not at liberty to talk about vultures, so uh, this one, this one of those things you just kind of have to wait and see. Sorry, Rosano, but uh, mum's the word. Uh, Last Survivor asks, Howdy, Mad Mole. I was wondering when you guys plan to implement the background ambient music that was mentioned in the old Kickstarter goals quite a few years ago. Personally, I believe a good soundtrack for roaming the wasteland is very important for atmosphere, and I think Fallout is a good example of this. This kind of goes to the cassette tape and that sort of thing. Um, you know, it's it's something that I know is dear to uh, Mad Mole's heart, it's something that he likes. It's kind of a wish list type item, and if they can do it, they will, and, you know, we'll kind of see. Um, you know, I know one thing that's kind of interesting is that they call all of the weird, you know, whispering in the background and the, and the uh, um, weird uh, music and uh, baby crying in the Burt Forest, you know, some of these, uh, like, and I think like in the uh, wasteland, you can hear like girders shifting and, and things kind of falling from buildings and that sort of thing, um, kind of like what's happening right now to this uh, POI that um, is a little bit glitched with the terrain. So as you can see, there's still a little bit of tweaking to do. I'm sure that's what uh, Robert's working on right now, trying to get uh, everything um, connected up correctly with the sockets and, and the slopes. You know, that was one of their big goals was that uh, um, cities can exist on slopes and it's just a matter of them getting that fine-tuned and, and dialed in so anyway as I was saying with the with the music you know they list that as as ambient music so you know who knows if they're gonna come out with actual music that'll play to kind of set that atmosphere for danger coming or something bad's gonna happen but uh, but we'll find out um, and again, one of those things, you know, I don't mind bringing up uh, to Mad Mole um, once uh, he's had a nice snicker bar and Alpha 16 is um, in our hands. So that's it for Q&A. So thanks to all who asked questions. I hope, uh, I hope that I did a good job. You know, I'm, I'm going to give this, uh, send this first to... Joel for his approval, and if he gives his approval, then you'll all be watching it, and if he doesn't, then this will just be a nice little memento for myself that I'll watch over and over and over again. <laughs>